Hey, what is happening? It's Carl from Who Are These Podcasts. I want to let you know you can catch us live in Nashville on Saturday, May 14th. I will be there. Croge, trucker Andy, Vinny, producer Chris, Dr. Steve Shuley, Egar, Jen from the Jingles Department, both our review girls, Vic and Casey. Go to WATPLive.com and you can purchase tickets. Check us out in Nashville on May 14th, WATPLive.com. And uh, I also want to play this real quick. This is from D-Bone, who is the curator of the Stuttering John Tapes team. This comes out from November 27, 2018, on the Stuttering John podcast, back when he had Royce as his co-host. And John explains that he could have hooked up with these chicks at Pickwick, but he just smelled really bad. (laughs) This is coming from John, not like Royce or someone just like, well, I mean, there's a problem there. Yeah, you know, Don, it was so embarrassing. Last night, I hung out with Royce. Right. That wasn't the embarrassing part. At my favorite pub, uh, Pickwick's Pub, in beautiful Woodland Hills. And I actually got two girls' phone numbers. But nice. at one point, one of the girls says that she moved over. But this wasn't the girl I was hitting on. I was hitting on this girl, April. The other one, Jenna. Moved over, but really talked to this other guy, and she said, "I said, why'd you move over?" She said, "Because I smelt." Now here is, <laughs> but here, right. but here is the truth. Like what? Though? No, he, like like ass. I think she said. Okay, but here's the truth. I it stop. is because I wear these sneakers that I wear if I'm doing any heavy lifting or if I'm driving for Royce when he needs a driver because, you know, his, See, it's my fault. All of his <laughs> all of his employees all of his employees have DUI, so if he needs somebody. How do you not have a DUI? <laughs> Let's talk so, about that. Yeah, so if he needs somebody, I will do Royce the favor. But the truth is But he cops want some low hanging fruit. Yeah, but the truth <laughs> is um, I so these sneakers smell. And I was happy to wear them because they slip on easy. I hate time. So today I have my Converse on. The chat literally says, I stunk like shit because of my feet, which I feel like is not a good reason to smell bad. <laughs> That's a really I mean, bad reason. This is classic chat. He's got to have eight reasons for shit. Yeah. And why do you need special se- sneakers to drive somebody? Why, and why do your sneakers smell that bad? Well, What's going on there? I just like to imagine that the Pickwick pub, right above his favorite bar stool, there's just like a discolored yellow spot on the ceiling <laughs> yeah. from the stink line. Is he smoking here? Nope. No, he's never smoked a cigarette <laughs> here. <that> a cloud? <laughs> Could you imagine that? Someone's like, yeah, this chick, they wanted to walk away from you because you smelled so bad. They're like, well, yeah, of course. I was wearing those sneakers. Oh, night. the converse <laughs> again. Because yeah. I was driving. Yes. And I had to wear those shoes. John, yeah. you'd smell better if you wore them around your neck. <laughs> you <asshole. laughs> if they had tied those shoes together, like when you throw them over the telephone line, <laughs> you just wore them around his neck. Well, that's where he, he found them. smell better. <laughs> so I have a special treat for us today, gentlemen. There was a Monday edition of Beer on the Balcony. But that's copyrighted. It is copyrighted. As we will soon find out. (laughs) How are you? I know I don't usually do a show today, but I wanted to to do a special show on a Monday. Why not? And I'll even call it Beer on the Balcony. (laughs) Okay, John. (laughs) It's official. Although this one is not behind the paywall. But this podcast video is copyrighted. Any unauthorized use without the express consent of the Suttering John podcast is strictly prohibited. Thank you. I thought the whole copyright thing was based on his behind a paywall, and that's why I couldn't use it. So he's going to confuse with his own bullshit now. He's like, all right, well, this one is available on YouTube, but it's still copyrighted, Carl. Well, that's what, what early alcohol onset type. <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> freaking Alzheimer's does do. I was surprised. So this is a Monday. Normally, he does shows on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. What are the chances he also drinks beer on his days off? Oh. I was really surprised by that. Like, it's a Monday and he's able to do beer on the balcony? He's a pro. I thought he was just drinking on Saturdays. Like, you know, when you do what you love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never work a day in your Never. life. <laughs> he took that too literally. Yeah. Never work a day in your life. <laughs> You're nailing it, John. <laughs> So I want to point out the amazing thing about this episode is that it has been taken down. 
because John has decided that, that he should quit the business. That he was getting trolled because of the special guest that he brings on to do the show with him. He explains why he's doing a Monday beer on the balcony. And now, uh, why, why you, you know, you're probably asking John, why do a, a show today? Like, why, I, you know, why? Well, <laughs> it's very simple. It's like he rehearsed that bit <laughs> and still did it all wrong. Because you know he like had it written down. You're probably thinking, why are you a podcast? No, Dude. why are you podcasting on a Monday? Dude, he sounds like an 80s wrestler that they gave a microphone to. He just yeah. didn't remember the yeah. script. <laughs> and you, Hulk, Hulk, uh, I will get uh, you. Captain Lou Albano. <laughs> you think you're mean, Gene? Why? You, you know, you're probably asking John, why do a, a show today? Like, why? I, you know, why? <laughs> well, it's very simple. You're probably thinking, thur, thur, uh, thur, thur. if you're like me, you're probably thinking, thur, 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 uh. <laughs> you know what? I got to tell you, now I want to know why. He really did sell me on it. <laughs> I would like to know to now. I was taking it for granted that there was a Monday beer on the balcony. I should really be asking myself, why? What is bringing this special treat into our lives? I, the county health why, inspector. You, you know, you're probably asking John, why do a, a show today? Like, why? I, you know, why? Well, it's very simple. Uh, <laughs> I'm good friends with Monique from Radio Gunk. Not anymore. And I have to say, I was admiring her shows on YouTube. And I called her. And she's very hard to get a hold of. I mean, I had, a, I had an easier time getting a hold of Donald Trump on Air Force One than I did getting a hold of Monique. What but season? I think she does a great <laughs> job. Any Stern fan or form or ex-Stern fan should, should go to Radio Gunk, watch her shows, listen to her shows. She does a damn good job, her and Arm and... Whoever else, there's the link if you want to donate, paypal.me slash John Melendez, Inc. So I wanted to catch up with Monique to just, you know, get her get her thoughts on the current Stern show and the her thoughts on the characters of, of the past. Can what? I translate what just happened? Yeah. He goes, why am I doing it on a Monday? Because I'm working around Monique's schedule, who's been big timing me for months now. She's harder to get a hold of than the present. It's because she doesn't like you, John. It's That's so, why people are hard to get a hold of. This show is so hard to watch and concentrate at the same time because I keep <laughs> looking at his fucking mustache and I'm like, what is going on with his upper lip? Is that like just for men? Just for fucking drunks? Just, what the fuck is that <laughs> on his lip? It's like it's like you tried to color it. I don't know. He's Jesus. a handsome guy. I'm not going to make fun of his appearance, Vinny. I'm, what a look! What a good looking guy he is. Had a hair on him. <laughs> had a hair. And those stink lines. <laughs> I just love this idea that Monique, the host of Radio Gunk, is hard to get a hold of. I'm guessing if you're someone she wants to talk to, she just answers the phone. Throwing it out there as a possibility. Well, John's problem is too many people have his number. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he shows up on the caller ID. That's why it's so hard to get a hold of people. He wasn't on uh, President Trump's caller ID. All right. John, for some reason cannot stop shoving his hands in front of the camera. I don't like this. You're you gonna, know I you're don't You're going like to watch this, this Vinny. You know I don't like this. I put like this together this. just for you. There's the Venmo link if you want to donate through the Venmo <laughs> app right there. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> wash your fucking hands, John. Just wash your hands before you do a show. You're doing a show on the internet. It's so gross. I mean, his nails are so green that like you could see through the green screen on them. Like it's just so disgusting. <laughs> what is the fuck is under his nails? It was up uh, mom's it's, ass from two episodes ago. It's his fucking ass and fucking shit and cat litter and baloney. <laughs> I'm sure there's baloney under that. You don't have to wash your hands. Just don't shove your fingers directly in front of the camera. Yeah, not a good look. No, that's, that's just, he really so does good. need to wash his hands, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, if you want to give him more tough love than I want to do, then I, I guess that, uh, that's understandable. All right, so now we do bring on... Do you remember on... when we used to laugh about how on the Stern Show they'd have to like yell at people about their hygiene? Yeah. Look at this fucking guy. He didn't learn. <laughs> he wasn't picking up what they were putting down Holy on the shit. Stern show. 
He's so disgusting. I mean, he looks good, but other than that. So now they're complaining about Howard Stern. Ugh. And this is funny because John says shit and you're just like, wait, you can't say it. John, you can't say that. Other people can say that, but you can't. And it's just not funny. I mean, someone's got to someone's got to let them know. Hey, no, it's not funny. No. All right. So he's talking about Howard Stern and how unfunny Howard Stern is these <laughs> is days. He's a tooth. <laughs> yeah, I know. Do you see this team's fucked up again? Oh, yeah. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Look at this fucking monster. <laughs> the transformation is complete. <laughs> Andy, Andy was worried he was turning into a monster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those days are over. <laughs> yeah, and it's just not funny. I mean, someone's got to... Someone's got to let him know. Hey, no, it's not funny. No. Wow. Yeah. I can't look at him, man. I don't like doing the show where we're looking at him. I know. I know. It's it's very difficult. They get into this conversation about how John started. Well, Chrissy Mayer started this whole dabbler subculture that we have now. It's a subculture at this point. There's a subreddit. There's a subculture, and uh, everyone should be very proud of this. I will admit that sometimes it's really funny because I am always blown away by how obsessed some people are with you. I really am. I mean, you have an entire Reddit dedicated to you called Dabblers Anonymous. Which yeah, and I know I'm good looking, Monique. I understand the infatuation, but, you know. <laughs> but the Dabblers thing always kills me because it's like for one thing that you said one time on one show, that has become exactly who you are. <laughs> <laughs> has become exactly who you are, the dabbler. Very well put, Monique. Yeah. Not often am I complimenting Monique, but she's spot on with this one. Not just one thing he said, one bitch fit he had. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he threw a fit about it. Yes. And has been accusing our friend Chrissy of editing that to make him look bad. Right, right. And we played this. I was on Chrissy's show on Monday on the wet spot on Compound, and we played this, and we're talking about it a little bit. And... Keep in mind, I was at least eight beers in, and I didn't even want to do that show. And I was like, oh, fuck, I got to do this show. So just to make this clear, he's talking about when he did Chrissy's show. Yeah. His his video froze, so it's just his image. Sure. And she asked him about Trump and what that means for comedy, because it was back when mm -hmm. Trump was the mm -hmm. president. And then John's like, what, are we going to talk about Trump the whole time? She's like, well, I thought because, you know, you're a comic, you'd have a, a take on this. You know, I, I thought you dabbled in comedy. Took offense to that. Oh, I remember. Took offense to that. And keep in mind, I was at least eight beers in, and I didn't even want to do that show. And I was like, oh, fuck, I got to do this show. See, and see, then, what are you doing to yourself? You eight fucking beers, and then you go on a show. What is yeah, wrong with you? A lot. But <laughs> but the other thing, Monique, is that that show, um, first of all, I was returning a favor, which is why I did it. But she edited it out the whole Ten minutes when we were arguing about politics, and she was actually sounding really stupid, saying that COVID is no worse than the common cold, and 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 I'm having that argument. That all gets cut out, and then it goes right into the dabbler thing. So it, it's such a load of horseshit. All right. So we talked about this with Chrissy. Obviously, that original video is still up. This was not edited in any way. And I love John's excuse that he drank eight beers before the show. I only had eight. <laughs> I know. And he didn't even want to do the show. The poor he guy. He was doing a favor. Yeah. yeah. So I just want to say this to John. When you do someone's show, whether you want to or not, you're doing the show. So be good at it and don't be blackout drunk. Oh. Or just, I'm not blackout. Or just don't complain about it Chris, later. I'm not blackout. What was the first thing again? <laughs> it's, this is the worst excuse possible. Is well, yeah, of course I was terrible on her show. I was blackout drunk, and I didn't even want to do it. I was wearing those sneakers. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, was smelling distracted my feet. by the smell. <laughs> I smelled my feet the whole time. No ng. It was tough. All right, so then John addresses the things that come out of his mouth that never phase him. It just comes yeah. out, and it's honest. Where, where she goes, what's wrong with you? He goes, a lot. But he never <laughs> stops to realize that, yeah, there is a lot. Yeah. But it still comes out. It's amazing. There's well, like no one behind the wheel there. Well, it's funny because uh, I'm going to bring Shuli in if he's ready to go. Shuli, there, Mr. buddy? Mr. Shuli! <laughs> What's up, everybody? What's happening, buddy? What's Shuli up? Egar. 
The Shuley Show. So we're in the midst of talking about this beer on the balcony with Monique from Radio Gunk. The reason why I wanted Shuley to come on is because they start talking about Shuley and the fact that Shuley finally came out and said, John, you want me? You got me. Let's go. Come on my show. You've been throwing it out there for a while with all of this. Oh, you know, Shuley, he won't even talk to me. So then he's finally talking like, a lot of shit. He's always, uh, I got something. I'm, yep. I'm trying to be a nice guy, but I got something that, that you know, he I don't knows know if you, I know. I don't know if you folks know. He's Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and not the pre- pretend kind either. Born in Israel. <laughs> Watch out for Not this just guy. on TV. He's full <laughs> Jew all the time. So John just had an epiphany. And Shuli, I, I want you to see this. I messaged Shuli to see, did you see this yet? Yeah. And so I'm like, all right, cool. I want to show him. I want him to see this here first. No. Yeah. I, I, you know, I had an epiphany, if you will, and said, John, just why? Like, you know, I had that guy, um, you know, the lawyer, you know, uh, Vinny, the lawyer, who yeah, was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, he was working with uh, Shuli, and he's like, John, you know, surely wants to challenge you to, a, you know, like a fencing match or something. A I duel? Go, yeah, a duel. I go, I go, no offense, Vince, but I don't punch down. Like, like, you know, for me, he's just like, it, it ain't, you know, it's just not worth it. Like, you know, I mean, to elevate his fame, I mean, like, you know, come on. If I, by the way, if I ever, if I ever come to you, Carl, and say, I need you to get me John or Monique to help elevate my fame. <laughs> Shoot me in the fucking head, dude. Because it's over. Yeah, just go get a job at a Foot Locker at that point. Like, you know, show business isn't for you if you're looking for John you, and Monique to help he, you out. The way he's describing this, you would think I was chasing him down <laughs> for years. You would think I was DMing this fucking loser, calling him a pussy. Right. You would think I was the one ambushing him uh, with qu- dumb questions. It All I did was respond. This was all you're doing for years. For years. You, you kept poking at me, kept poking at me. So now you got me. And now you have this epiphany. And now he has an you, epiphany. Yeah. <laughs> you're and, doing and me a favor? Does Police, he know that epiphany bro. is not a, br- a beer brand? Does he know I, that? I had two epiphanies <laughs> and a cause. <laughs> and I realized... <laughs> I'll take two epiphany PAs, please. <laughs> this was after Monique said she had to go on her forum and beg everyone not to be upset with if we're going on John's show. Because anywhere they're talking about the Howard Stern show, anywhere on the internet, they're all bashing stuttering John Melendez. Yeah. So even Monique yeah, is like, oh, Jesus, do I have to go on this guy's show? Fuck, I don't want to be on this either. Well, Monique, you don't have to. But if you want to make it better, eight beers. Yeah. But I want to point I- out. That for some reason he said that there was going to be like a fencing match or something like they're trying to the pretend fuck? this is something it's not. No, it's a roast battle. Like if you guys want to have this out, Shuli said, let's that. do it. Let's go. It's not even that because God forbid I ask him to write something funny. I'm not going to put him on the spot like that and actually come <laughs> up with material. What what I am saying is he doesn't have the money to pay all- Adam Hunter for this. <laughs> <laughs> right. You got all this shit you, you want to say. Come on my show and say it to my face. Let's let's go. Let's have this out once and for all. Uh, that was my epiphany. I'm going to shut this fucking douchebag up. Invite him on my show. Because literally, Shuli was trying to take the high road. The first time he came on our show, we didn't talk about stuttering John. He's just like, you, you asked know me to, and, yeah. I, and I turned it down. You did. I said, I, I said, I don't want... You know, I don't need this. I don't. I don't want it. He's he's insignificant on so many levels. And then after a while, I'm just like, man, what would happen if I actually responded to this fucking idiot? He backed out in the second. As soon as you respond, he's like, yeah, you know what? I've I've seen the error of my ways. I will no longer yeah. fuck with people who are willing to fuck with me back. But if he does want to do a fencing duel, I will do it just for the outfit. <laughs> That'd be funny too. All right, it doesn't stop there, Shuley. Let's see what else John has to say. So, like, of course he's going to pick a fight with me because, no offense, but I'm actually famous. <laughs> I mean, let me pause again just to point out, John is the one who started the fight with Shuley. 
Not the other way around. And now John's trying to pretend this guy's just fuck with me just to like get all my fame credits. And can I just clarify something that neither of us are famous, John? So just <laughs> let it go. I know. This whole idea that Shuli's a nobody. Yeah, but you're a loser. <laughs> Who are I mean, you to you're call worse than, than a nobody. Like you, you, you're the laughing you know. stock. You're a low cow. Yeah. It's worse than being a nobody. Yeah. You're famous for being a loser. It's the nobody versus it's, the has been <laughs> in a fancy match to the death. <laughs> I mean, if you gave me my choice of nicknames, uh, I think I would pick Whack Pack Whisperer over Hero of the Stupid. <laughs> what, right. what denotes skill? We're, we're getting to that. <laughs> so, like, of course he's going to pick a fight with me because, no offense, but I'm actually famous. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, and I'm not here to trash him, like, because I just said it, I don't want to head an opinion on trash, but I'm, I'm just saying, I, I don't know because I never listened to the show. Did he do anything that had that was significant on like I don't even I have no idea. <laughs> he was the rack pack whack pack wrangler. So now you have stuttering John, who always talks about all this inside baseball with Howard Stern. He knows everything that's going on there behind the scenes. You have a guy named Shuley who's been on there for 50 years. Like, what did this guy even do out there? I don't even know. What was he up to? Doesn't sound like all of a sudden he's got this blind spot on Howard Stern. You know what's so funny to think about? Like, say John had stayed and didn't go to the Tonight Show and Shuley ended up there. At some point, a few years into this, they would put Shuley in charge of interviewing John at least once a week. <laughs> just to see what he's doing back there. What are you doing high pitch? Go over to John's apartment see what's going on over there. Right. He, John would have ended up being a whack packer had he stayed. The, the Suttery John Craftacular would have been like the biggest bit <laughs> of 2008. I said, if he didn't burn so many bridges over there, he'd be the most popular whack packer on the show today. <laughs> All right. I mean, so how this... could you stay away from, from him and... and and her, this Monique, I, I just got to bring this up. You know, when I, when I, yeah, when I left the show, she immediately sent me a direct message on Instagram. Hey, would love to get you on the show, hear your side of things. Now, I know this fucking message board, uh, you know, goes out of their way to fucking shit on me, right? Like they'll, they'll tag me and shit where it's like, they, I think they had, uh, a, the worst of Shuli, and I think there've been like four episodes at like three hours a clip. So I'm I'm providing tons of content for these people, right? Yeah. And she messages me and goes, "Hey, we'd love to have you on and hear your side thing." And I write her back and I go, "I was under the impression that you hate me." And <laughs> right. she writes back. And she writes back, "Oh no, hate is just reserved for family. That isn't real. That we're just doing shtick." And and I just wrote back, "Go fuck yourself. I would respect you more if you stayed true to who you are." And and wrote me and said, "You suck." They begged me to come on, just like they begged Brent and Scott and all these people from the show. And the reality of it is, they're trying to be this stern fan network Reddit thing on there. Yeah. And it's it's so fucking tiny. There's such a handful of fucking losers on there, led by this idiot. And again, I I give you open door. You want to come on my show, Monique? You come on my show. I don't do you a favor because I'm actually famous. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Shuli, that's a lot of tough talk coming from a guy who's not on Beer on the Balcony. Okay, <laughs> that's, okay. Right. that's a good point. That's right. I mean, Opie was on Beer on the Balcony. You got to be a bit, bit, pretty big name to get on there. Yeah, you have to be famous to be on Beer on the Balcony. Grillo was on there. Yep. <laughs> All right. That a weird guy from Virginia. <laughs> Let's watch them try to figure. Oh, right, his buddy, <laughs> his buddy Danny. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. went to school with. Let's um let's talk about them trying to figure out what Shuley's contributions were. You know hockey puck Shuley. To the Howard Stern show. Now <laughs> keep in mind, nice guys, this is Monique is the biggest Howard Stern fan to ever exist. She she runs the the Howard Stern forum. And then Stuttering John is the biggest insider to ever exist with Howard right. Stern. And I don't know if you know this, but Stuttering John was friends with Howard. Howard invited him over to his house. And he, and liked, he wow. gave him some popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> he, he liked John more than he liked Baba Booey. I, I, listen, I don't know if that's true or not. John's told me that a couple of times, so let's see if they can figure well, this yeah, out. He always gets rid of the people he likes and keeps the people he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect sense. You know, yeah. the fact that he, he, they pay Gary Delabate enough money to buy a mansion in Connecticut, and when John says, I'm going to make more money in L.A., they're like, all right, see ya. I live in sunny Calabasas. <laughs> Stuttering John math. 
on display. But has he done anything that was airworthy? Like, is there any bit that he mm. did that you could say, "Oh, that was a great bit," you know, by Shuli? I mean, I can't, I, uh, I can't, I can't help you there. I, don't I mean, know. I don't know, but I, that, that's why I'm like, you know, I'm not, in, you know, I'm not gonna punch down. All right. So he doesn't know if there's any bit that Shuli's ever done from the Howard Stern show that anyone would know about. And Monique is like, yeah, I don't know either. I've I've never I, who Shuli who? What what are you talking about? Yeah, I mean, she 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 is the biggest barnacle attached to that fucking show that that rides whatever fucking coattails, whatever. We hate the show, so we're gonna talk about it every single day, every minute of the day. If you hate something, stay the fuck away from it, you mental patience in or 2020 fuck? in 20 fucking 22 being the biggest fan of the howard stern show is basically the equivalent of being like the biggest fan of the rotary phone none of it fucking matters <laughs> right. lady none yeah, of it we've matters. all moved many, on it's better without yes that. yeah how many times are you gonna sit there and go it's just not the same show anymore no it's not it's not it's not move it's not the good. fuck on with right. your life do something productive provide for society you fucking barnacles attached to the ss stern you love it you love the show you can't go a day without listening to it you need it you're super fans deal with it when shuli had an ongoing saga with brunt about brunt swinging and Brent would come in and talk about swinging with his wife, and then she would come in and fuck with him. I guarantee Monique was talking about that nonstop on Radio Gunk, and now she's going, yeah, I don't know what Shuley did. Every single time there's a whack pack or tan mom, underdog lady, I pitched Eric, Bigfoot, anytime Shuley's in the studio talking with them, doing the impressions, and here's Monique going, yeah, I don't know what he did. I have no idea. I you ever hear the bit day. about me moving to Alabama, you fucking <laughs> dummy? That was, a, that was a pretty good bit. <laughs> yeah, you that really a, sold that bit one. That's still, that's, it's still going. A little past the post office at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so to your point, Shuli, because I feel like some of the things that you're talking about, I could be accused of with all of the Stuttering John uh, podcasting that I do uh, watch nah, and curate. You're, right. you're one of the good ones. You're one of the good <laughs> ones, Carl. You know that. Yeah, Carl's not a fan of anyone. Like, you can't <laughs> call Carl. Exactly. For sure. <laughs> I barely listen to the creep off. So this is a perfect example of Monique not understanding what she's up to. Listen, you know what? There's, there's bizarrely almost podcasts dedicated to hating on you, which I find I know that. I know. shocking like- and amazing. I, I There's like three imagine, of them. I can't even imagine mining enough content from what you do to <laughs> generate a whole show. I mean, you can't. That's what you do, Monique. You all you do is talk about Howard Stern show on your show. She's like, I can't believe people make fun of Stuttering John all the time. Why? Why She's is that obviously so not good at mining material. If you obviously can't get not. a whole show out of this. She should have a, a green screen, and the background should be a padded fucking room. They're insane. <laughs> they, yes. they, they are delusional. She this was, is all I, you are about is hate and commenting on other people's work. What don't you understand? Before you came on, I did 20 minutes on Amy Schumer with Howard Stern. I would never sit here and be like, I don't know, you could just make fun of Howard Stern all day. It's like, yeah, there's a lot to make fun of there. That was just one segment of, of one episode from there's, this week. There's the nose. <laughs> yeah, there's and, that. And there's the, the, the lack of humor. He doesn't go out and anymore. I, got, I don't know if you I heard got, about that. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, you're not the only one. I guarantee you, the writers are sitting there during that interview, rolling their eyes. The same thing you are. I mean, it's oh, yeah. just like <laughs> no, it's, it's pretty it's, obvious at this point. Nobody can sit through that and be like, "That was great," except for Amy Schumer. So mm-hmm. this is so disappointing because Stuttering John has finally decided to take my advice. See, I don't care about. See, that's the thing, Moni. Like that to me is funny. Like I, I mean that. It's like when my green screen, like you know, uh, uh, when it fell. That's that to me is funny. It's like when the co- when when there was a few cockroaches and I fucking freaked out. That's funny. Do you like, know we I, did a it, whole we did a whole segment on your green screen. Oh. You know, a wow. whole segment on his green screen falling down? Well, then maybe you can understand how you could do like a whole episode about the Suttery John yeah. show. Maybe you get yeah. it then. It, it's no wonder your shit podcast is nowhere on the fucking charts ever <laughs> and nobody listens to it because you're doing a fucking thing on his green screen. Be smart. Do it like Carl. Do <laughs> 10 minutes and then you move on to the next fuck up that he made. Well, we made fun of Radio Gunk. 
And Monique immediately messaged me and just like, oh, you're just doing this to get the fame from our show. And, oh you know, never reach God. out to us. I'm just like, what, what are you talking about? We talked about Radio Gunk one Didn't week and then moved on. Didn't you anything from that interview before you make fun of someone you have to let them know in advance? Right. I should have let her know. Here are the jokes I'm going to make about you. I hope you're okay with these. You called her before we did the segment, right? I, oh, shit. I forgot. Oh, too fucking bad. <laughs> Dude, she Julie, might be crazier than him. Julie, she, she might be nuttier than him. Amy Schumer literally said that before she tells a joke about someone, she asks their permission and tells them what the joke is going to be ahead of time. <laughs> I mean, nothing helps comedy like that. Let <laughs> yeah. me tell you something. It's always good to know what the punchline is before it happens. It'll get a genuine reaction. Like, sir, when I'm doing crowd work, I'm like, sir, you look, uh, you're, are you Polish? Okay, I'm going to do a joke about you guys losing the recipe to ice. Is that okay? Okay, here we go. <laughs> hey, I heard your submarines don't work too well. All right. So <laughs> after uh, John asks if Howard talks to his kids. All right. So he's trying to get the inside scoop from Monique. He's like, do you, does Howard still talk to his kids anymore? And Monique is answering this question. And then John He's has, asking Monique this question. Yes. He's asking Monique if Howard talks to his kids. If Howard talks to Howard's kids, his three daughters. Okay. This is this is like watching someone having a conversation with a shopping cart. Okay. <laughs> You're just like, these people are insane. Well, and the funny part is that Monique is speculating. She doesn't know anyone on the inside. No one wants to talk to her, obviously. And John's speculating. And they're not even talking about the shows anymore. They're talking about, like, the relationship with inside a family, which is the opposite of what anyone should be doing. And then so Monique answers this question and starts to give all this information. And then John cuts her off. And um, but Ashley is a nurse, apparently. And Emily just sings really weird kind of Jewish music on her YouTube channel. I don't I know, know what she I, does. I, I would never go after his kids. I mean, you know, that's always, to me, they didn't choose to be in the spotlight, just like my kids didn't. <laughs> I think it's really, really, it, it takes a really horrible person to go after kids who never, ever want me go after because I, I chose to be in the spotlight. But not my kids, because they have no interest in being in the spotlight. We heard you! <laughs> John, you're the one who asked the fucking question just to go on this fucking rant about don't talk about my kids again. Every time well, not with to mention, that. And not to mention, he's he's confiding this in someone who just talks shit about the guy's kids. Yeah. You know, and he's going, I could never do that. You just sat there and laughed at her saying that. When, and by the way, how psychotic is it that you know what his kids do for a living? Yeah. Like, how fucking insane are you that that you sit here and act like you hate this guy? Well, his one daughter's you know a things- nurse at Senior Side Eye, and she works the 4 p.m. shift. Yeah, it was weird, it's, right? It's 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 beyond it's it's up there with bobo showing up at the hospital with yeah. gifts on the birth of his kid it's it's that psychotic well it's interesting too because if you picked up on that she goes well the one daughter's putting these youtube videos out and john goes yeah yeah i know so wait so of course is john obsessed with kids now because i thought that we weren't supposed to be obsessed with people's kids who didn't choose to be famous that's that's the lesson i've been learning over the years but yeah, well, John, you know, Carl is someone's kid also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, My mom doesn't like what you've been saying about me lately. <laughs> I'm pretty sure MIT got involved with Carl. <laughs> <laughs> so I give credit to Monique here because after John goes on his predictable rant about talking about people's kids, Monique actually brings up a pretty good point. He didn't care about Kathy Lee Gifford's kids, who he wished AIDS on when they got older. He didn't care about anybody's kids. You know, everybody was was fair game. Everybody. Interesting point. I didn't even. Right. Yeah, I didn't even know that. <laughs> you know, I got to turn off. Hold on, let me turn off the FaceTime. The okay. rolls have started. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it's so funny. Is it? <laughs> you know, they do. They do their best, Monique. <laughs> they probably do. <laughs> <laughs> Hold Is on, that what's me... going on now? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I I didn't turn my phone off, so I got to now I got to delete. I got to just turn this <laughs> off. Uh, <laughs> How hard you see, they're it? gonna keep calling. You can't figure it uh, out. This is this is what gets them off, you know. Hold on, I gotta figure out. I how swear to, do to this. God, yeah. I would yeah. laugh at him, Get but somebody did this to me during uh, the creep off. Let's see. I, yeah, but you I know learned. there's a way because I did it once. <laughs> Where I was able to just stop it. Oh, you have to stop. Yeah, oh, you turn about the noise that comes off. out of your. 
Yeah, it's literally he goes. He goes. I can't figure out how to stop that. I did it once, but I can't figure it out out now. So Monique explains to him like, you just can't have your devices on during the show, Dobby. It's that easy. Goddamn credit one bank every time I start a live show. <laughs> Where I was able to just stop it. Oh, you have to stop. Oh, you talking about the noise that comes out of your Mac? Yeah. Or you have, or your you have mouth. to keep that off like always. Like, yeah. It doesn't even. If you have the pop up, who cares? But just get rid of the noise. Yeah. Okay. Well, now it's gone. I just. Yeah. I just. Uh, but this is what the, they, they, Monique. This is my life. They do I told the trolls so to call funny. me later. Like, God, how obsessed are you? <laughs> These trolls don't they know I'm busy? Yeah. Does he know I'm on the balcony with my beers? <laughs> He's not even on a balcony. You no, expect man. him to fucking turn a ringer off? <laughs> I mean, give me a break. Yeah, what were we thinking? So the beginning of that is great because Monique says, you know, Howard didn't play by those rules. And Vinny and I were just talking about this before you came on, Chili. When Howard came into the Rochester market, we had Brother Weeze was the number one morning guy. And Brother Weeze had like a mentally handicapped daughter, right? Or Correct. Yeah. And Howard or Howard went after it so hard. It was brutal. Yeah. And of I... I would think that would be off limits, but it worked. <laughs> I mean, Certainly nothing back him. then was off limits for him because it all it all you know brought attention and eyes and ears on on him and what he was doing. And at that point in time, that was the way he rolled. He was he was a younger guy, and that's the way he worked. And you know, we can all sit here in Monday morning quarterback and say, "Yeah, that's fucked up," but at the time, nobody was like. That's fucked up. They're like, yeah, go go get them. Go after them. Talk about man cow's dead dad. Talk about this, that, and the other thing. Nothing was off limits until it comes back to you. And then and then that's when things, you know, I remember when ONA started yeah. going off about his kids, and that's when shit got real. And it's My like, vagina. look, man, <laughs> listen, you, you can't you can't play the game and expect other people not to, you know, try and play it the same way you do. I'm uh, so looking and, up this YouTube channel later. <laughs> I need to hear this music <laughs> again. All right. So now let's fast forward to John addressing some of the trolls that we have come to love here on uh, Who Are These Podcasts. Oh, he answered That's his what phone? That's I get, Monique. It's like this fucking... <laughs> he answered the phone. Oh, hey, Cardiff. Hey, what's up? Can you, uh, can <laughs> let, you me address, <laughs> let me address, Let me address my trolls. Hello. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> That's what I don't get, Monique. It's like this fucking lunatic's like... Like, like Sal or whatever, uh, you know. like they, you know, like, Sal. Kind of you saw this guy. He's tweeting out, "John is my lord and savior." Every fucking day. Is that the one who was gonna cut off like his penis or his finger? Yeah, he was cutting off. But thanks to my moderators, they figured out it was he was using pictures that he was finding, like you know, of on course, Google you Images. Had to, you had to know that that's what was going on. <laughs> fucking lunatic would do things like that you know it's a shtick and so everybody kind of gets it at some point but you you went through a long phase of you know fighting with these people so that they would they would get a response out of you i like how it's presented like it's over like the fight is ended, <laughs> right. the war is over the next thing he said was no but they talk about me first like, like, that's the next thing out of his mouth i like that he says his moderators were, were the ones who figured out the cld didn't actually like him it wasn't John, his moderator. So, by the way, I think this guy's going a little bit, you know, he's leaning into it a little bit too much. And What a Mo crack team he's got. And then Monique goes, there. we all eventually figure out Santa isn't real, John. We're glad you finally yeah. caught up to us. Now we're all on the same page. His yeah, the, guy, the, guy with the, the guy with the chipped tooth chugging cores is like, <laughs> yeah, that one went over my head somehow. <laughs> <laughs> his cell D dropped his big bomb yet. His Not yet. Shell. Not yet. We're mm, still waiting I can't on wait. that. Mm, I can't wait. So the reason why this show happened is because they just did an episode on Radio Gunk about Fred Norris. And John goes, how could you do a show about Fred and I have you on there? I got all these great tidbits. Oh my! You got to hear what I have to say about Fred. So the very first question that comes in about Fred on this show, and it couldn't be answered in a more stuttering John-like fashion than how John <laughs> answers this question. Okay, here comes the question about Fred. John, who was the better on, on stage as a guitarist, you or Fred? Me by far. Of course. <laughs> who of was course. a better guitarist? Me by far. It's not even up for debates. Why, why wouldn't you reach out to me to comment about myself during the Fred special? <laughs> yeah, I could have told you I'm a better guitarist than him. Could you imagine taking a fucking <laughs> black light to the neck of his guitar right now? <laughs> oh, God. Could you just imagine? Or his actual what neck. 
Now, so, I'm curious, did, did anyone hear the Fred thing? Are they shitting on Fred now, too? Like, oh, of course. I, I imagine Fred's untouchable. Like, he, he he's done no wrong. Oh, no. What Monique was saying was that Fred doesn't even show up anymore. He doesn't talk on mic. He barely plays drops. Like, he's just completely Yeah, it's done. called collecting a paycheck, Monique. Yeah. You should look into it. I, Robin is also collecting a paycheck. It's very similar to uh, getting a government check, but you earn it. It's very similar. Yeah, exactly. So then, for some reason, they have to start bashing Fred's band, King Norris. And Monique says, yeah, you know, Grillo said that Fred's, ba- Fred's band was really good. Grillo said he went to one of the shows. And John has to interrupt that, of course. This is a lot of projecting, by the way. Howard and I and Beth and Susanna, and we went to see Fred in Howard's limo. And he was... It was so bad and horrendous. And Fred would never face the stage. He would turn his back to the stage. Or he has his head down constantly. He's so afraid. This this is the emoji. He's so afraid of his like. Look, Fred is so uncomfortable in his own skin. I'm telling you right now. He's always been that way. He, He can't stand himself. That's a lot of projecting going on right there. Wow. He he can't stand John. I know that. (laughs) Yeah, that's Um, why he wasn't facing out out to the crowd. That's, you know, uh, where you pause this picture of him is just disturbing. (laughs) I didn't do it on purpose. He looks like disturbing. Fucking Vincent D'Onofrio in Men in Black. Like (laughs) Edgar's wearing the human suit. Look at that fucking (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Sugar water. I need sugar water. For energy. Um, So he's talking about seeing... Fred's band over 20 years ago. This is yeah. probably the 90s. And yeah. he's talking about how, oh, yeah, his band. And he's shitting all over him. I don't know. I've seen local bands hundreds of times. I couldn't tell you how good a band was that I saw in 2001 or 1999. <laughs> Wouldn't you just be like, I mean, yeah, Fred's could, good. You, he's yeah. fine. Yeah. Listen, I, I over the 15 years, I've gone to many King Norris shows to cover it for the news. And, and at times I would just go if I had an open weekend or something. I was in town and, and, and they were, I would go see the show. Their shows are fine. They're not, you know, <laughs> right. it's, I, I don't know what you're expecting. It's at a bar. They're a bar band and they did a great job. And Fred was talking the whole time on mic, telling stories. In fact, Howard made a whole thing out of it once on the show where he would play Fred talking to the audience in between songs and goofing on him about it. So I guarantee you this is either all made up in his head or he was so disgusted to see John there <laughs> that he just fucking ignored him from the stage the whole night. Probably. You, you know that he was saying to Howard, look at Je- look at Fred. He's not looking at the crowd. If I was up there, I'd be looking at the crowd. Oh, Howard. yeah. I'd be doing this completely different. That's what he's doing. Of course. Yeah. He's, yeah. He'd be fleecing the crowd. Uh, uh, <laughs> next song, uh, you get to pick it if you Venmo me uh, $30 right now. <laughs> all right. I have one more clip. And this is interesting because... Stuttering John talks about this great song parody that he made about Fred changing his name to Eric. And he's, <laughs> oh, he no. shoehorns in a slight to Shuley on this one for some reason. I thought he doesn't punch down. I told down. you. I told you, Mooney. Was that, Shuley? I thought he doesn't punch down. <laughs> I know, right? All of a sudden, when you're not there, oh. it's fine. He doesn't want to be in front of you punching down. Okay. Rules I told you. I told you, Monique, that... Um, you know, when we found out that he legally changed his name to Eric, Eric, I did. I did this great song parody because, unlike uh, some of the people, I actually wrote bits on the show, yes. and I did a do, song parody, do, 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 uh, and it was to Eminem's. You know, my name is, yes. and I pulled clips of Fred, and it was M. My name is Fred. My name is Eric, and it, it was him. You know, you know, and then it'd be Fred Norris, and I gave that to Freddie. Played it once, or twice. Howard loved it. And then it disappeared. Oh, well, I'm sure the fans were outraged then, right? They were probably calling it. Where's that amazing song parody? My name the is. Way, I, it sounds terrible. I love I love the VH1 behind the music <laughs> breakdown of yeah. copy and pasting Fred and Eric in a song. Like what you describe my eight-year-old daughter could make on Adobe Audition right now. He's sitting here like he just fucking, like he just wrote a masterpiece. Well, the uh, creativity, Sheila, is what you got to realize. I mean, it's really what the fans have been asking for years. They're going, where is Gilbert? Where is the Fred Eric <laughs> Eminem song? That's yes. all anybody's yeah. wanting That's all anybody's been talking about. Marcy Turk out here. I can't hear Senator John's amazing song parodies anymore. What's going on? 
And you know why it disappeared after the first play? Because you walked out of the room. And they go, this is fucking terrible. We played <laughs> yeah. it once. Don't ever play it again. Oh, boy. All right. Shuli, I want to thank you so much for coming out and checking this out with us. I thought uh, I just thought it was interesting that John all of a sudden has this epiphany and no longer wants to fight with people, even though he's been fucking with you for years now. 20 bucks, I get him out of his epiphany by uh, in two weeks. I like to handle things <laughs> through the court systems at this point. Yeah. I've moved on. Yeah. Does he have you blocked well, on Twitter, Shuli? He blocked me on Twitter, but that's okay. I, I got his buddy Tommy and I are corresponding, and so we're going to be setting something up pretty soon. Oh, oh, so that should be interesting. Tommy from MSCS? That's right. Oh, shit. I got to reach out to him. I was messaging with him, too, and I, I totally dropped the ball on that. He's a yeah, interesting yeah. character. We, we should we should try and, and interview him together, Carl. Let's do that. I think that would be I think that would be the best. Let's do that for sure. That's that sounds like a really fun time. Because and I'm Tommy's very excited for the live guy. show. By the way, boys, very excited, dude. It's gonna be so much fun. May 14th in Nashville, WATPLive.com. You can get tickets. Julie will be there, and we're still trying to figure out a venue to get a comedy show with you and Vinny and um, probably Vic the Review Girl. <laughs> oh, I'd love for Vic to MC. I, I know. Oh my God, Vic would be the best up again. MC. Oh, <laughs> Ew. down by the docks. Where the fuck is she doing stand up? Uh, well, but yeah, I, I'm Julie. shocked that the venues aren't lining up to uh, book the comedy show yet. But I'm sure we'll find something I hope and so. we'll get it going. I hope so, buddy. So that we'll let everyone know about that. We're still working on it. But yes, thank you so much for coming on. I am looking forward to doing the show next month in Nashville with you. And let's talk about do something with Tommy as well. Yeah, man. And I'm in, uh, just real quick, I'm, I'm in uh, California all next week doing gigs uh, around 420. So if anybody's out in the L.A. area, I'm doing uh, Northern California, then Southern. Uh, you can go to my website, shalomshuli.com, for all the details. And thank you, boys. As always, good to see you guys. Awesome. And yeah. Shuli does a great job, so check him when he's doing stand-up. Always a good time. Shalom, Shuli. Shalom. Thanks, oh, buddy. I got a good guy for you to have on your show, by the way. I just interviewed him yesterday. His videos are all over, uh, going viral. Uh, Alex Stein. You know Alex Stein? I do know Alex. In fact, I've been in contact with him. Yeah, He's great. He I just had great. him on my show yesterday. And he's a huge super fan of Howard. So He's, he's a big WTP fan, too. So, yes, I'm going to have uh, him on. The, Alex Stein, if you don't know who this is. He goes to these uh, <laughs> these meetings. Okay. These city council meetings. City right? council meetings and shit. And he acts like a, a flaming libtard. Okay. And he just goes over the top with it. And they have to give him his time because it's like mandatory that everyone gets well, their two minutes or whatever. <laughs> I said they, they've painted themselves into this woke corner where yeah. even if they don't believe the nonsense he's saying, they can't doubt him. They can't say anything contrary to it because then they'd be portrayed as monsters. So this guy is zooming into a city council meeting talking about how the school isn't respecting his trans species lizard daughter <laughs> that identifies as a <laughs> lizard it's great. And he doesn't he <laughs> makes a zoom into him. He goes in person too. Like the guy's got nuts. He's got nuts yeah, on him. He'll just go and, and do it. That's a but lot the of fun. pandemic helped him a ton by, yeah. by opening the zoom doors to these meetings. And and he's just he's taken advantage of it. His content's so great. It and makes it very We were easy, talking yeah. yesterday. I mentioned the show to you, uh, to him and, and he'd love to come on. So I didn't awesome. know you guys were talking. That's great. Yeah, very cool. All right, Julia. We'll talk to you soon, buddy. Bye, everybody. Shalom. Bye, Julie.